what there what really is. And what really is is neither one of these beliefs, either that that I am the self, but I am the self that's going to be annihilated when I die, nor the illusion that I am this permanent and eternal self and when this body dies, I'll somehow go on and be reborn and go to heaven and blah blah blah, whatever myth that we want to associate with it. But we can see beyond that and see what really is, and that's the problem, seeing what really is. And what really is, why can't we see it? It's there all the time. It's because our mind is constantly generating and regenerating the illusion that keeps us from seeing. Uh, William Blake said that uh, if we could, if the doors of perception could be cleansed, then what appears would be what really is, which is infinite. Or I may not have quoted that quite correctly, but that is. And, and what he says is very true. And what we are after is something that is far superior to any of the delusions that we might cling to and far more satisfying. You see, with the first truth that life is dissatisfactory and that it's filled with suffering, the subtitle being that it doesn't have to be, what Buddha always replied when somebody asked, you know, what what he what he taught, he said, I teach suffering and the end of suffering. So the opposite of suffering, that's what we want. Uh, and what the Buddha had to say about that, when lust, hate, and delusion are abandoned, a man does not choose for his own affliction or for others' affliction or for the affliction of both. In that way, there comes to be extinction here and now without delay, inviting inspection, onward leading, and experienceable by the wise. So we're talking about an extinction of suffering and the causes of suffering. The word nirvana or nibbana means the extinction of craving. That's what it refers to. And it is through the extinction of craving that we are able to experience the ultimate truth, which is liberating. Craving perpetuates the illusions that keep us from discovering this ultimate truth. And so there are a variety of reasons why we need to overcome craving. We need to overcome craving because it is actually the cause of our suffering. And we need to overcome craving because it is the source of those delusions that keep us from uh, understanding this ultimate truth which will completely liberate us. And the important thing about this is that in none of this, although it, it of necessity tends to be described in negative terms, in terms of what is absent and what is not there and what is not real, that uh, it's when we say that uh, we need to discover the truth that the self we think we are doesn't exist, never has existed, and so therefore cannot be annihilated. That we are in search of something that is positive rather than negative. We're not, we're not searching out this uh, a negative in the sense of annihilation. What the Buddha had to say about that is the unaffected is hard to see. It's not easy to see truth. To know is to uncover craving. To see is to have done with owning. There is an unborn as unbrought to being and unmade 
and unformed. If there were not, there would be no escape. No. Here, for one who is born, brought to being, made, and formed, there would be no escape. But because there is an unborn, an unconditioned, an unformed, there is. But since there is an unborn, an unbrought to being, an unmade, an unformed, an escape is therefore described for one who is born, brought to being, made, formed. And this is this is the understanding of this truth that liberates us from the illusion and frees us from the trap that uh, we find ourselves in because of our biological evolutionary uh, nature of being beings with a particular kind of mind, a particular kind of inclination, and so that illusion is there. I mean, this desire and aversion is not there by accident, and it's not because we were bad kids in a previous lifetime. It's because, uh, and this illusion of self, likewise, is not there uh, for any of those kinds of reasons. The reason that we have, that we exist as the kind of beings we do, is that over time, we evolved, and we evolved. Part of our evolution that made us successful was having a mind that formed this clear, solid idea of self. And along with the idea of self is the sense of the self, this feeling of the self as a reality. And a, a mind that having created that idea of the self and the feeling of the self, then would generate desire and aversion in response to different things. So that we would desire and pursue and accumulate those things that contributed to our survival. And that if somebody else came along and tried to take our mate away from us, we would feel a strong aversion and go tear a strip off of them. They're functional. And they don't exist in order to make us happy. And they definitely stand in the way of our happiness. But the wonderful thing is, is that, number one, they can be overcome. So, just as biological entities that have a mechanism in our brain and mind that selfs, that creates the idea of a self, and as an entity that has mechanisms in our mind that propel us forward and motivate us through desire and aversion, the fact that that can be overcome, that is, is wonderful news. But as thinking beings, and having the kind of intelligence and percep perception that we do, uh, that would be good. I mean, why can't I just be happy? Why can't everybody just be happy? Well, if we can get over that uh, false belief in, in self and cease to be driven by desire and aversion, be free from suffering and therefore experience contentment and happiness, that's a good thing in itself. That is a reward. Absolutely. No question. But there is a part of us that wants to know, that seeks truth, that will say, you know, if, if you can have this happiness, there's a part of you that's still going to say, well, uh, all, all this happiness is really good, and uh, I don't have near as much dissatisfaction as I used to, but there's still this sort of existential uh, why? And what is truth? And, 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 you know, we are called homo sapiens. And the sapiens part of that means that we, uh, we what is most characteristic of us is this uh, thirst for understanding. And